Okay, so the last piece of this um, section is going to be identifying related and equivalent statements. So in mathematics, if you're a math major, you do take a class in logic, or at least a class that is mostly logic. And we actually use these type of statements to prove certain things in computer science, in coding, in mathematics, in physics, in any sort of place where we have to prove something and we call them proofs so it's in the written language um, and sometimes we can't really prove directly the implication like if p then q there's not enough evidence to support that so what we can see is related and equivalent statements and most the equivalent maybe we can find an equivalent statement that i can prove that has a lot of evidence to the implication and then I can still prove my point so and make my reasoning valid so here if P then Q had any if it had an equivalent statement then I could use that way to actually prove my point and it would be equivalent to saying if P then Q okay so in here um, we say okay the implication was given to us right if I win tickets to Coachella then I will take my friend so let's try to do these other three the converse so if Q then P so rem I just want to remind you that remember I win tickets was the antecedent and you will take your friend was the um, consequence so if it's if Q then P so the converse so if it's if Q then P, that means if I take my friend, I, then the consequence becomes I will win tickets. Okay, so the inverse is not P, then not Q. So if I do not win tickets, I will not take my friend. And the contrapositive would be not Q, then not P. So if I do not take my friend, I will not win tickets. Okay. And um, those are the three equivalent statements, or I'm sorry, the um, the converse, inverse contrapositive statements. Now, if we made a truth table out of these, maybe we could see the truth values, the resulting truth values, and maybe some of them are the same. So let's see. So if I did, um, here's P and Q, two statements, two choices. I'll draw this long. <laughs> so true, true, false, false, and then true, false, true, false. Okay, and then the first one is the first implication, if P then Q, right? And the only time that was false was when the antecedent was true and the consequence was false. So this is true, false, true, true. The next one is the converse, so that would be if Q, and I'll do this in a different color just so we know that it's if Q then P. Okay, so if Q then P, let's go the other way. So oh, the only time it's going to be false is true then false, right? So here is true and true, false and true, those are both true and then true then false so there's the false but then the false and false is also true so here's the false and the true okay so let's do the inverse the inverse is not p then not q so not p then not q 
And what we're going to look for when we're doing the truth table is actually seeing if some of these resulting truth values become the same. Now we see these two aren't the same. So maybe these next two may match one of these two, right? Because if it's equivalent, what happens, especially like in law, is maybe we can't directly prove if he was, if that person was there, then they are the murderer or whatever, or the robber or whatever it is, whatever crime that happened or sued or whatever. So if the person was there, then they must have brought, been the robber. But maybe there's not enough evidence to support that. They didn't find fingerprints or, I don't know, shoe size, shoe prints, whatever. But maybe if it's one of these, they can prove the other one and there's enough evidence for that case. And then it, by default, an equivalent statement would mean that it, by default, proved the other one. So it's really interesting how logic can really work and play, especially like in law, computer science, philosophy. It's really embedded into those disciplines. Okay, so if not P, then not Q, we can think about this. So we'll just do opposites, right? So not P, not Q. So these are both false. If false, then false. Well, that's okay. That's true. So true, false. So this will be false, true. So false, true means we didn't buy ticket. I didn't win tickets, but I went anyways. So that's true. If false, then true. So using these not, so this is actually true, then false. So if I won and I didn't take my friend, that was the false. And then if false, then false, meaning if true, then true, that means true. The last one is the contrapositive, which is if not Q, then not P. Oop, there we go. So not so now we're gonna go this way, right? And then look at that this this way and opposite. So if false then false, that is true. If false then true, that means true then false, and that was the only time it was false. So the other one should be true, right? So if true then false, meaning false then true, that's true. If false, then false. If true, then true. And then that's true. The only, only time we have a false is um, the second one right here. Okay, now looking at them, let's go ahead and see if we can highlight any equivalent statements. So true, false, true, true. True, false, true, true. Oh my gosh. So if I prove the contrapositive, that means that's the same as the implication. So this means the contrapositive, uh, let me go ahead and erase that. If I prove the contrapositive, that's equivalent to proving the implication. And so that means that, um, let me pick a different highlighter color, that I can have a choice. If I need to prove if then if P then Q, I can always prove if not Q then not P, then it's the same. These two are equivalent and I have a choice now of what I have to prove. The next part, let's see, true, true, false, true, true, true. Oh, look at that. Those are the same. So that means that here, if the converse is equivalent to the inverse, and this means that if I want to prove the converse, then I can prove the inverse and I have a choice. And so I can prove either or and it'll be the same. A lot of the times, so if I was a lawyer and I couldn't say if he was the, if he or she was there, that person was there, they are the robber. I could say, well, if they were not the robber, then they were not there. That's proving the same thing. And so sometimes if they're, if I'm that lawyer that, okay, then I'm going to prove that that person was not the robber, then that means they were not there. 
And that's true, right? They're, if they weren't there, they weren't robbing anywhere, right? And so um, that's the same thing as saying, well, if they were there, they were the robbers. So they're equivalent statements, and we can play on these statements like this, especially the uh, implications and conditional statements. So um, in the bottom, I went ahead and wrote this out. Um, so equivalent statements mean that their truth values are the same. So a conditional statement and its contrapositive are equivalent, right? The implication and contrapositive. And the converse and inverse statements are equivalent because their truth values are the same.